Hello and welcome to this introductory tutorial for Fluency. We're going to start from the ground up and demonstrate how to use Fluency to translate a simple Word document. And uh, we'll start from the basics and work up from there. So to begin with, I'm actually going to close the Fluency Welcome Center. And we're going to open a file from our client by clicking on the Open folder. Now I'm going to navigate on my computer to where the files are located. And we'll go down and select the file that we want to translate. Open that. And as soon as we open that file, Fluency will then prompt us to input the source and target languages and the source and target locales. So we'll go ahead and select Spanish here and type in partially what I want to go to and then click on Spanish and we'll go United States. I'm going to push down my down arrow here, quickly navigate to the one I want to go to. Okay, so we just set our source and target languages and source and target locales. The locale will affect, uh, the target locale will affect the spell check system, so you do want to put in the country uh, representing uh, the destination for the translation. In addition, uh, we do recommend that you put in the client. It is optional, uh, but it can be useful in future scenarios. We'll demonstrate why, but for now it's just usually a good idea to put in the client that you're doing the translation for. And with that, we'll go ahead and click on OK to start a translation. OK, I'm going to simplify the interface real quickly here. And we'll just start with the basics. On the top left here, I have the source text. And this is exactly what it would look like in Microsoft Word. And you'll notice here that Fluency has automatically highlighted the first segment or sentence. Down here in the target text is where I will perform the translation. And then as I translate, Fluency is going to take my translations and put it into this blank document here. So this will be my target document. So as a translator, I have a couple options. I can type in my Spanish translation here. I could click on CS, which will copy over my source target or my source text into the target text. So we'll do that real quickly. And you'll see that brings it down here. In addition, we could also call upon machine translation and then do a post edit and use that as my translation. Once I'm happy with my translation for the currently highlighted segment or sentence, then I hit next or enter on my keyboard. And you'll notice that Fluency is now putting together my target document for me. So just a note, all translations take place in here, and then when we hit Next or Enter, Fluency will then move that text up into the target preview. Okay, so again now here on the next sentence, I have the text is highlighted. I'm going to do machine translation again. And you'll notice here that we have a little bit of bold. Now if I forget to do that bold, and I hit Next or Enter, you'll see that Fluency has applied bold to the entire sentence. It didn't know where to turn off that code. So I'm going to hit back and I'm going to make a change here. I'm going to highlight this, apply bold, and hit next or enter and you'll see that it will update this. So again all translations and changes need to take place here in the target text. If we need to change something that we've done previously up higher in the document, we need to first go to that sentence and then we can make the change down here. So for example, let's say I want to change this word here. I can actually double click on this sentence with my mouse. Fluency will then take me there. I can make the change here and hit enter or next and you'll see that it removes that and updates it there. Likewise, we can also navigate by double-clicking on a sentence on the source text. So this works on the source and the target preview. This allows it to, us to quickly jump around from place to place. Now, one of the things that's important to remember with a CAT tool, 
is that you only want to translate what is highlighted. And on occasion, that can be problematic. So we're, we have an example down here where fluency has artificially or improperly split this sentence into two pieces. So as a translator, remembering that I should only translate what is highlighted, I would have to translate this portion and then move to the next sentence or the next half of the sentence and then translate this portion. Now that, of course, is rather difficult in some instances. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to merge this with this and make one complete sentence. That's done here with the Merge button. So I click on this, it'll merge the current one with the next one. So I click OK. I now have one sentence. So if I go down here and use machine translation again and hit forward, you'll see that puts in the translation for me. OK. Now let's assume that we've translated the rest of our document and we've made it all the way down here. Again, we'll apply some formatting here. And we hit next. The fluency prompts us that we've made it to the end of the document. Now we'll go to File and Save As. And from here I can now save out my new target preview or my target document that we've just created back to a Word document. I'll save this one to the desktop. I do have a couple options here. I can save it to a Word document. I can save it to bilingual Word file or PDF. And a couple other options exist as well. We'll cover those in later demonstrations. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and save this. And you'll notice that uh, we did not translate every single one of these sentences or segments and that'll be reflected here in the target document. And we can go back now if we want to and finish translating the rest of the document and then save that out again. And this concludes the basic or introductory tutorial for fluency.